first off, I think every analyst may just retire now and give up because they're never right. Um, but I think, you know, the bottom line here is it just shows you how wrong Wall Street's been all year. I mean, if you look at, you know, earnings per share on the S&P 500, every single quarter, Wall Street has to keep upping their earnings estimates because they've been so off. By the end of the year, they could be wrong by like 40 percent based on what they thought at the beginning of the year. So I think there is a narrative right now because we did see a little selling earlier in the week. Didn't last that long. but We did actually finally get a little bit of selling. But are we getting to a point now where the markets are peaking out? We're at all-time highs. You know, we have this proverbial sugar high because the government's created trillions of dollars that have just been bespo bestowed upon the economy. And I think we have to look at is the momentum right now, Adam, is just so awesome. If you look at the S&P 500 over the last five months, it's been up over 5% each month consecutively, which is the first time since 1956. And when that happened in 1956, the market went on to go up another 25%. Could we see the same thing right now? I'm in the camp to say, yes, we could see a melt up here. Okay, so let's talk about that melt up, especially in regards to the S&P 500, because there are a lot of us who are old time passive investors via our 401ks. We're very risk averse. We set it and forget it in an index fund tied to the S&P 500. But you also point out that just a few stocks in the S&P 500 actually, um, you know, would account for some of these dramatic increases. Is that is that a warning to those of us who said it and forget it? And those stocks, obviously, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. What do you say? Yeah, I think right now, if you look at it, they're 22 percent of the index. So if you think you're buying the S&P 500, right, that assumes you have 500 stocks, you have broad diversification, but you actually don't. Um, and the one thing you just mentioned on your show is about interest rates. And interest rates are going higher, even though the 10 years back to 1.3% from 1.7, it's still well above the half a percent it was last year this time, you know, if we were talking. So I think if we think inflation is real, and I suspect it is, if you look at labor, um, you know, the shortage that's going on right now, it's hard to find workers. We've seen commodity prices rise. That's not great for big tech. And to put in perspective, if those five stocks went down 10%, you would need the bottom 100 stocks in the S&P 500 to go up 75% just for the index to stay even. So I think you definitely have to broaden your exposure out here. And we've also seen Biden come down hard here looking at anti-competitive practices. Are they exploiting our data? Which they are. Um, you know, so I think there, there's a lot of headwinds here and you have very high valuations on these stocks. So buying the S&P 500, you're just buying a tech fund in drag. You know, you, so you've got to be careful here. If you want to get that reopening trade, you've got to broaden your exposure. The S&P is just not going to do it. But, but if I don't want the reopening trade, it, it, a lot of people were down on tech stocks at the beginning of the year, and now they're right back into tech, tech, tech. And the fact is, when you look at the, the giant that Amazon is, it would take years for the federal government to break them up. As you uh, just talked about, the Biden administration coming down hard. We know he's signing the EO as you and I are speaking right now. So for those of us who have benefited you know, S&P 500 up 16 percent year to date. A lot of that, as you just pointed out, driven by tech. Why wouldn't we want to just stay in it, stay in with tech? Well, you know, the old saying is too much of a good thing becomes a good thing. And if you look at Amazon specifically, it's underperformed the market by about 20 percent since last September, which kind of coincides with the reopening of the economy trade. Right. That's when the vaccine news started to come out. That's when you start seeing money go into that rotation of cyclicals energy stocks, financial stocks, which have dramatically outperformed this year, you know, well above what big tech has done. And it's 60 times forward earnings. And if you look at big tech in general, you know, Facebook, 30 times forward earnings, Microsoft, 30 times forward earnings plus, these stocks have a lot of good news baked in. And you can go back to right after the tech bubble burst back in 99, 2000, Microsoft at that point was one of the largest components of the S&P 500. They tripled their earnings from the year 2000 to 2014, but because the valuation was so high, the stock did nothing. And I think that's what the bigger risk here. It's not a big sell-off in these stocks. It's the fact that they do nothing relative to the fact that other industries, other sectors are starting to pick up and do so, so much better. And money invariably is going to find it to where the growth is going to be the fastest. And you're at a point now where so much growth is baked into those stocks. That's why they've underperformed so much over the last six months since we've really seen this dynamic of being locked down to business activity picking up again. Uh, by the way, those of us who are myopic and only look at the United States, when you're <laughs> looking for growth, are you telling people who listen to you, look at Europe? 
And I realize Europe has been a very dirty word, Adam, for the last decade. But yeah, I talk about this a lot on my podcast. But again, money's going to find where the best opportunity is. If you look overseas right now, you've got multiples that are much cheaper than the U.S. Growth rates in Europe are going to be faster than the U.S. next year. It's hard to believe that, maybe because they're coming from a, a lower base here. Um, but you're starting to see really, really good bargains in Europe. If you look at dividend yields, we know we're getting abysmal yields right now on your money market fund. Ten-year treasury, again, at 1.3 percent. Well, if you look at dividend growth, it's going to be like 11 percent a year for the next couple of years in Europe, faster than the U.S. And again, growth rates are going to pick up there. And if you start looking at playing catch up here, vaccination rates are going up big time. They're starting to catch up in regards to where they are in that cycle of that reopening. So if you've missed the boat already, you have money in cash, you definitely want to take advantage of Europe being cheaper. And that's where money's going to flow. The dollar's starting to weaken over the course of the last 12 months. It's had a little spike here in the short term. But my guess is with these trillions that we've been printing basically over the course of you know the last year or so, that's going to continue to weaken the dollar, which also acts as a little bit of a kicker for your international exposure as well. It's a way to hedge your U.S. currency bet as well, you know, have be it as opposed to like cryptocurrencies or something like that.